Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Tea Time at the Water's Edge. Today I have Crystal Rastetter on again, um, and we are talking about trad wives. Um, is a trad wife biblical? What is the actual biblical guideline for being a godly wife and mother? Um, is homeschooling the only right answer? Do women need to stay at home full time? We're talking about all of these things and more on today's episodes. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm here with Crystal again. I'm very excited about this episode. Hopefully there won't be any crying in this episode. I think it's a a little bit of a lighter episode than the past couple ones. Um, So I wanted to talk about, I've been wanting to talk about trad wives for a while since, probably since we started putting the podcast together because it's something that's been kind of on the rise in the conservative circles um, especially if you're on Instagram a lot or social media in general, you, you should probably know what a trad wife is. If you don't, it's short for traditional wife. Um, and it's basically this stereotype of like, uh, like a stay at home mom who cooks everything from scratch and, you know, wears dresses all day. And it's either in this vein of like, you're either like a farmsteader kind of uh you know like cooking sourdough and like milking cows or you're more of like a like 1950s kind of housewife those are the two biggest kind of categories i've seen um and so i wanted to talk to crystal about this because um you are not you are definitely not a trad wife i wouldn't call you i agree i'm not (laughs) but i feel like you are a great example of how to take care of your family the way that the Lord wants us to without um, like all of these aesthetical things. So you did not know what a trad wife was, right? I did beforehand. I did okay. not. Because <laughs> you are not on social media, which is probably a blessing for you. <laughs> it is. I, You know, part of the reason why I don't get on social media, there's a couple reasons, but part of it is is the times that I, I have seen or seen posts or things like that, it seems like there's a real temptation to kind of have this, like, um, just making things kind of seem better than what they really are. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of really just kind of turns me off to it. Although I know there are many benefits, you know, to seeing family far away, you know, connecting with people, but just some things that I'm really not interested in. I really am always surprised when I hear information because <laughs> I find it out the first time. <laughs> so yeah. 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 Something that I was kind of explaining to Crystal was, um, what I find interesting about a lot of these videos is, um, so it'll be like an Instagram reel with, you know, this woman who's like cooking sourdough um, and it'll have like this nice music in the background and maybe they'll she'll put up like a Bible verse or something that, you know, is like a biblical principle about taking care of your family or your home or whatever. So I feel like a lot of women subconsciously, we think like, oh, I need to do, I need to look like this because you kind of like conflate the two things in your Mm -hmm. head without really realizing it. Um, And I do want to clarify, none of those things are bad, right? Like I make sourdough. Uh, I currently am a stay at home mom, but I, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, we would like to get chicken someday, maybe, but it's, you know, it's not like our life goal right now. <laughs> you garden, right? You garden though? I do a little bit, but it, yeah. I mean, bit. I don't do anything like hardcore. Extensively, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, none of these things are bad in and no. of themselves. And I think, you know, God gave every woman unique abilities and creative outlets and, um, ways to make our homes beautiful but i think it's all going to look different 
or every family, which is, I think, important to remember. Um, And I think also, too, because it's coming out of the conservative movement and, you know, by default, a lot of us Christians are conservative. And so it's easy to be like, oh, wow, like, you know, it's so refreshing to see women wanting to stay at home with their kids and and cook for their family and do all these things. Um, But I think it can be idolized a little too much and, um, you know, distract us from the actual what God actually wants us to do. Agreed. Um, And I think another thing, too, is just feeling pressure from other women, like, in your circle or on social media or whatever. Um, And I think a lot of women, they get excited about these things. And sometimes it comes from a place of like, you know, I love doing this and you might love doing this, so you should do this. But sometimes I think it can come from a place of uh, maybe like pride and like you need to do this this way. This is the only right way to, to cook or educate your kids or whatever. Um, But I think it's important to remember that none of these things are moral issues. Yes. Um, But yeah. Did you have anything? Yeah. I really kind of looked into the looked into it and kind of thought about it. And I thought, yeah, these are these can be really great things and admirable at that. Right. Whether you're homeschooling or if you're thinking about holistic ways to feed your family, things like that. Those are all great. But I think it comes down to your intent and I think where it could go wrong is if just like a working woman, you know, who's climbing the corporate ladder and, you know, they're thinking, oh, this is the one right way or this is the standard that's uh, we need to remember that our standards come from the Bible. It's not just because we think this is the best way that other people need to do that and then put that expectation on other Christian women to either, you know, make sure that they know that the right way, the right mm-hmm. way is to stay home and be a trad wife or to work outside the home. We need to be very careful with that and proceed mm-hmm. with caution. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like I said, there are some elements of it. Like, you know, I think a lot of the trad wives online, they do talk about like honoring your husband and loving your kids and, mm-hmm. you know, making your home beautiful. But, um, like we said, that's going to look different mm-hmm. for everybody. Um, and a verse that I had been thinking about a lot, just, you know, thinking about this whole trad wife thing is how in Proverbs 31, it says that she looks well to the ways of her household. And um, that's such like a general, you know, you could do so many things with that. And it's specifically talking about her own household and um, you know, like we've said, that's just going to look different. Mm -hmm. What, what you do to take, you know, look well to the ways of your household might not look the same in another woman's family. Um, and I did want to read Crystal, do you mind reading, um, Titus two, three through five? This is like a pretty stable passage, but I think it's important to, to look at. Okay, Titus 2, 3 through 5. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, or slaves to too much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I've heard some women they can get really hooked on that where it says working at home um and so i kind of asked you if you could explain like what does that mean because obviously it doesn't mean that you can only that you can't work outside the home because in proverbs 31 like she's you know conducting business and she's mm-hmm. doing all of these other things too yeah and sh- and she's an entrepreneur right exactly mm-hmm. right like she works in the home and outside of the home but i think when talking about working at home, it's the priority of it. It's the important work of supporting your husband, you know, and taking care of your children and teaching them the gospel and kind of keeping that together. And yeah, we do have a responsibility to keep our household um, together. So I think it's not just that you can't work outside the home, but not at the expense of the Mm -hmm. most important things. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you, yeah, if you were putting your job first and then coming home and just like putting your feet up and not putting any 
work into your home, then that would be going against that. Or letting, like everybody says, you know, leave, your, check your work at the door. Like, don't bring it home. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's hard that's for anyone. Point. I think that's hard for women. Um, I think, we're, you know, we just kind of things ravel into the next thing. And you may be stressed or carry that stress. And I think you have to not let that affect you because you can't. You have to be able to give that to the Lord. And if it is affecting you, reevaluate what do we need to do because this isn't working. I have to be able to support my husband and kids and love them and teach them well. Um, And you cannot be stressed out or too worried or even too tired to be able to take the time to discipline your kids and parent them and teach them. Like those are all such important things that, you know, Mm -hmm. they have to be done. Yeah. And that was something too, like, because I was working when we had our first, I was, I was only working part-time, but I, I remember asking to cut my hours down at some point because, um, you know, just as you're like, as you start having kids and you're learning what your family routine is and like, depending on what your husband's schedule is, if, if you do daycare or not, like there's so many different factors. A lot of factors. And it was, you know, I was feeling like, okay, I feel like I'm being, you know, like I am too tired. I feel like I can't do as much at home as I would like to, or, um, you know, being able to like serve more at church was also another factor for me. Um, and so I kind of slowly cut down my hours and eventually just stopped working just for this season right now. Um, and I think also like talking to your husband about it too, and not like going against anything that he that he thinks would be best for your family is definitely that's definitely one of the things I wrote down like you have to be able to communicate together and decide something together you know prayerfully pray about it and see what's best and when Adam and I did that and even deciding you know in both in both sending your kids where you're going to have them how you're going to have them schooled and if you're going to work or not you have to prayerfully consider it and talk about it with your husband you have there's so many factors that are involved and Adam and I sat down together. We looked at all the different things, considerations. You know, my I'm so fortunate to have my mom and my sister who could help watch my girls. Like, I didn't have to consider daycare or finding a caregiver. Um, I have a job where it's not full time around the clock. You know, I have holidays off and breaks in the summer, um, whereas that really would have changed it otherwise, you know, and there's... There's so many different factors, salaries, benefits. With my job, I carry the benefits for my family. So a lot of different thing goes, things go into play. And, you know, I, I taught in the classroom for 16 years. That was what I was clearly called to do. But then the Lord started changing my heart um, and prompting me to go a different route, which in turn, he was so faithful. Um, we always had to reevaluate, like, how, is, how does this look? Like, how is Kate doing? How is Lucy doing? How's our household? How are, am I able to support you? How are we figuring this out? And the Lord provided for me to be able to switch into a specialist position, which allows me to not bring as many things home as I did um, and frees up the time for me to um, have a little more time with my girls because you have schoolwork to do, you have devotions to do, which are so important, and I didn't want to miss out on any of those things. Um, and be able to provide the best I could. So I think laying that at the feet of the Lord and allowing him to be faithful, and he will be with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just like reading in that Titus passage, just the different characteristics, like it, you can be, you can be a stay-at-home mom who is unkind and Mm -hmm. and idle with your time and have a lack of self-control or you can be a working mom and be really intentional with your family um, and love your husband and take care of your home. Um, you can homeschool your kids and not actually disciple them well right. and just assume Sorry. that, well, they're homeschooled, so they're going to be, you know, they're going to turn out fine. Um, and so, and I know, like, with all the craziness going on in the world, I think those of us who do pay attention to to like more political things it is easy to to have this like checklist in your mind of like oh homeschooled like that's good you know stay at home mom that's good and we forget like what the bible says right. and and that you know like outward appearances i mean that doesn't that's not going to do anything for you no 
we don't want to be like the Pharisees, right? We mm-hmm. can make things look a certain way, and we all know this, you know. But what what really matters is our hearts and what's really happening, you know, mm-hmm. not just how it looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and one thing too, just about like educating your kids. I know this is kind of like a hot button topic right now. I feel like, but um, I wanted to ask you how you personally disciple your kids who do go to public school but um i just have to brag for a second kate and lucy are like the sweetest most well-behaved girls i've ever met in my life they're so kind (laughs) and you they're just the sweetest yeah i just love them but um love your girls too (laughs) and our girls love each other yeah (laughs) it's really sweet (laughs) but um but it's clear like that they that you have been very intentional, like you you and Adam have been intentional from when they were little, discipling them. So have you done that while also sending them to school? I, it, it's a tough thing, and I think um, God gives us grace in the moments where we don't do as well. But I think as parents, I think realizing no matter how you educate your kids, it's your it's your right, it's your responsibility as a parent to train them up in the way that they should go, like Proverbs 22, 6 says. And, you know, um, we teach our kids the biblical Christian worldview. We make sure that our girls knew that so that when they went out into the public schools, they would be able, it would raise their awareness to be able to decipher between truth and worldly ways because we know that they're going to encounter it at some point. Um, and so we you know, have talked to our kids. They know it's very clear. Our family is going to serve the Lord. That's our mission. That's our goal. Um, and that's that's how it will look for us. Um, and so it did mean that we had to have some con- controversial conversations with our kids and make sure that we're proactive in that and try and stay ahead of what they might hear at school um, from other kids. And I will say, um, Kate has been in public school all the way up through eighth grade, which is what she's in now. And um, Lucy was in public school until she was in third grade. And then for a season, we took her out of public school and enrolled her in private Christian school. And I can tell you that it's there's no perfect scenario, no matter where you're at. Just because it's a private Christian school doesn't mean every kid that goes there is a Christian kid. Um, and the majority is, yes. And, and, and you would think that, you know, it, it's a better environment and it is in some aspects, but still it, you find that we found that some parents send their kids there who didn't do well in public school and things like that. So you really have to, um, disciple your children, no matter what, and telling them the biblical truth. Um, and so we have conversations with our girls about those things. We have, um, conversations at night. We talk, we do family devotions. Um, this season, I'm doing a devotion with each girl in um, separately so that I can spend one-on-one time with them. But there are seasons where we've done um, devotions together. And so we have those conversations and we talk about that. You know, I ask my girls questions, you know, Adam and I are like, hey, you know, we're all sinners. We teach them that people are different. They actually see this boots on the ground, but praise be to God, our girls come home and ask us questions. The Lord has been very faithful in them not being able to decipher, like to be able to decipher this isn't quite right, or this is what happened. And we have these um, conversations. Lucy came home um, this year after being put back into the, we really prayed about it and felt like, you know what, you know, Kate's had a great experience at her middle school. We think this would be great for Lucy. So we're, you know, put her back into, transitioned her back into public school this year. Uh, Praise be to God, she has an amazing teacher. Um, And so we pray about these things and the Lord continues to provide. Circumstances aren't perfect, but she came home and she said, you know, mom, they were talking about positive self-talk. You know, I can do this. I have the power. And she goes, I knew that was not right. She goes, and the girls asked me why. She's like, we don't we don't always do that. She's like, I didn't know if it was demonic. So I said, oh, oh, it, you know, it's not demonic. But remember what we talked about. We get our identity from Christ. Like mm-hmm. we, we get our strength, our, you know, encouragement, our power from Christ. He's the one that works through us. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't boast about ourselves. We boast about Christ. Um, And so then, but it gives us the opportunity if they have questions about things or if something happens to have these conversations and praise be to God, the girls come home, we talk about things. Um, They, they have a very good um, academic um, curriculum, 
fortunately, that's another thing that we're fortunate about. I think it depends on where you live, Mm -hmm. the school zone that that you're zoned for or in a good school zone. Um, And um, I work in school systems, so I have access to the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I think whether you are a teacher in there or not, you need to be involved, you know, but to disciple them at home. And I would not say when my kids go to school that the school takes over. They know. They know who they belong to. They know their Christ. Mm-hmm. They know that they're our kids and we serve the Lord. Um, and so we pray for them. We talk about things. Um, we disciple them at church and they are discipled. I mean, they're discipled at church and we disciple them at home. That's our priority. Mm-hmm. And I think the Lord has helped us with that. I think, and Adam and I were talking about this, one of the benefits is one day they're going to go out in the world. Um, and this raises their awareness to be able to think about what's truthful, what's not, so that it prepares them. And what better when we are coaching them and guiding them at home through this? So I love that aspect. I think it affects kids differently. So you have to be careful with that. You have to know your kids and you have to um, reevaluate. Like I said, see, is, is this working? Is this not working? What do we have to do? I think any decision that we've made, we've known um, what our priority are. We're not you know, going to veer away from the gospel and what is truthful in any aspect. We know what the boundaries are and the lines. We look for those kind of things. Um, but just just knowing that um, we are a part of that and we are helping them, we stick with, with it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like what I got from what you're saying is like you can't be hands off mm-hmm. where like no matter where you send them yeah. to school because like you said, even at christian school and i went to christian school for a time as well like you know things still happen like kids still get suspended and you know some you know there's still teachers that aren't good and uh you know families that maybe you you don't you know you can't trust or just an endless number of things but i feel like that is so good that lucy noticed that especially like positive self-talk like that's such a i don't know i feel like that is a very advanced like concept and some christians can even like brush over that so that is really that is really good that she noticed that and i think i don't know if you said this when we were talking about something else like a couple weeks ago but how you should teach your kids like there's that saying of like knowing what a real dollar bill looks like so that you can notice, you know, that you can recognize counterfeit ones. Yeah. You don't learn all of the counterfeit bills because there's, you know, like yeah, that's not the right way to do it. One. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that that illustrates that really well. But um, and I did I heard this quote from somebody. Um, there's a blog online that that I follow, like a mom Christian mom blog, but she said that and she was talking about this very thing, like how you know how to choose where to put your kids in school. And she said that um, we should, no matter what, we should be teaching our kids that the thing that should be most feared is the sin we find within our own hearts. And I thought that was such a good point because, yeah, like no matter where you send them to school, if you're not teaching them that, then it doesn't really matter where they're going to school. Um, And so, yeah, I think... I think there's some people in the conservative realm that maybe maybe you should like take you know back off a little bit with you know kind of thinking that that it is like a moral issue and you you know if you don't homeschool your kids then you're crazy um because there's just there's so many like if you you have to back up a little bit and talk about all these like the things that we're talking about yeah there's and it's different for everyone everyone has different factors i do feel like things that have happened, especially since 2020, and things, you hear about things that happen in schools, right? We heard about things that happen in California, things that happen in Loudoun County, which was close, you know, in Virginia. But I think just because we have to be very careful not to let that fear get a hold of us and be like, I have to pull my kid out of school right now, mm-hmm. talk to people. You, as a, you have a responsibility as a parent to find out, you know, Talk to teachers who are in the school. Talk to people to find out firsthand what's happening in your school because just because it's happening in one school doesn't mean it's happening in another in school district. So I think we have to be very careful with that as well. We don't want to believe everything that we hear 
And we do need to be mindful of it too. So it's okay to look into it. We just have to find trustworthy sources to find out that information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, another thing that I think there's tension with as well, which we kind of already touched on, is how we decide as women, like working versus staying at home full time. Um, and another thing that that I did want to mention too, I feel like in just in like casual conversations with, you know, other people or just overhearing things, I've noticed that those of us that are stay-at-home moms, we can get offended when people say you know when you're like trying to get to know somebody and they say oh do you work and I think a lot of stay-at-home moms want to be like yes I do work you know like excuse me all day long (laughs) yeah without a break I just I don't know I think that we should be careful with our attitudes with that because like you know what they're asking you they're not they're asking you if you have like like a regular job and I know that career not like, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're not saying that you're not working. Right. Or not valued when they <laughs> do they know that you are. Right? Yeah. But it's just I just find it funny when women get really offended by that because it's like, okay, you know they're not. They're not judging you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, it's funny because I I actually was talking to Lisa Ruby and we were talking about how this this has actually been a topic where there has been some hurt feelings over this. And you know, both ways for people who are working and someone's like, oh, you work? Yeah. Oh, my, you know, you're so brave or whatever, you know, and they don't mean anything by it. They, yeah. That's just different than their viewpoint. I think yeah. I think we need to be careful exactly when we have these conversations to be slow to take offense to it and be careful to not offend anyone at the same hand, you know, thinking that our way is the best way because we know there is not one single way, you know. Yeah. God gives us Christian liberty to be able to decide for our families what to do. It doesn't say in the Bible, you have to be home, you know, or you have to work. And we see that in the woman in Proverbs 31, how she worked Mm -hmm. from home, took care of the things she needs to, and she was still an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, what you had said too, like constantly reevaluating in every season of life or like as your kids get older, um, like I would go, I would like to go back to work as a nurse when our, when our kids get older. Sure. Um, and so like things are going to change. Like you're not, yep. you're not making this like permanent decision. Um, and like asking your husband, like, like we already talked about. And I think it is okay to like pray about what you desire. Like if yep. you feel like, like you were saying, like your job is, the Lord has gifted you in a certain job and you don't want to let it go. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing either. I don't either. And I think too, if God has gifted you in something and you say, there's been many a times I prayed to and cried and it's like, Lord, I don't want to do this if you don't want me to. I don't go to work every day to make huge amount of money. I don't. I go to work because it's a huge mission field and my family can be part of the community that way. That's just how we feel like the Lord is using us with the girls in school, with me in the Virginia Beach school system. And I pray that he he does. But um, And like you said, like you're taking care of your family too because like your, you know, your benefits, you need your benefits from your job. So... Like you're still providing right. for your family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. And it I is think hard. I think we as women, just like in a lot of different areas, but especially with this kind of stuff, we instantly want to compare our lives to another woman that we're talking to. You know, like we whether it be like, oh, like I I'm doing it so much better than she is or oh maybe I need to be doing that maybe I'm not doing a good right. enough job when we should just like not do you know not ask either of those questions yeah. and just recognize it's not going to look the same for everybody the bible doesn't give us these you know super specific things to check off right. that we can or can't do um a lot of it like in the Titus 2 passage is character and even in proverbs 31 like she works hard she is prepared for things she's resourceful she cares for the poor she's kind she fears the lord like there's 
and you can do all of those things whether you work or not or or however you you know educate your kids that's right yeah um and another question that i wanted to talk about too is um so in titus 2 it says you know that the older women are to teach the younger women how to love your husbands and love your children um so how can we be intentional with those things i know you already talked a little bit about with your kids but um especially like as a working mom and wife how how do you intentionally try to do those things with other with other women younger women no like how do you intentionally love your husband and your oh, kids okay. as yeah. you're working yeah um i was thinking about proverbs 31 and just the things that that i could pull from that um about the ways that i would support my husband and, and kids to support my husband encourage pray for him, help him to lead, you know, speak the truth in love. Um, Proverbs 31, she's trustworthy. She's dependable. Um, she maintains, um, if she has a good idea, she discusses things with her husband. She's loving. She's honest. Um, she shows interest in his problems and concerns. And those are ways that I find that I, I try to um, support Adam and come alongside him, offering suggestions, advice, corrections when needing in, in a loving fashion. Um, and I feel like Adam and I cooperate together to raise our children. Um, and I think being grateful to him and, and showing confidence in his decisions to lead us too, I think are all ways that I can help um, support Adam in the things that he does. And he is... I'm just so grateful for Adam and just how, what an amazing father and husband that he is because mm -hmm. he has pitched in time and time again when things have been difficult or I've had extra work because there are times and seasons where that'll happen. Um, and if he sees the dishwasher needs unloaded or loaded, he'll help with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm grateful for his humble attitude and the fact that our girls see that, that we work together. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of supporting my kids too is that I pray for them, I pray with them, I pray over them when they're sleeping at night for their safety, for their friendships, um, for their academics, their teachers. Um, and I really think reading the Bible with them. Um, I recently was, um, Lucy had had a difficult day and, and we were kind of talking about it. And we went to get the devotional that we're working on, um, which is about girls making good choices and she was like you know what mom she's like I, I I don't want to read that tonight but if you have something else so I picked a psalm you know and I read Psalm 139 to her and reminded her her creator takes care of her and loves her so I think to knowing how and when you know to pray for your kids and what scriptures to read to them and and things like that too and communicating with them and providing the opportunity to have the talks like Kate's so cute too, how she'll, she'll start talking about, mom, I read this Bible verse, you know, and this, this meant so much to me and finding the time. Sometimes Kate, because she's middle school, she gets up later than us. So I'm getting ready to go to bed and, and she's coming in ready to talk. And I'm like, hang on a minute here. <laughs> but, but taking the time to have those yeah. conversations while she's willing and able and okay, I might lose a little bit of sleep or not get as much. It's worth having the conversations mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's good to not think of, like, my, you know, this is my area, like, whether it's, you know, taking care of the house or, or like, your job, like, okay, this is my, this is for me, and, you know, like, the husband has his job over here, and we don't, you know, we just do our own things, and then we come home and do it again the next day, like, I think that's good to see it as, like, you're a family, so that's everything right. that you do is you know you do together and like talking about like I'm sure you talk about your job with your kids mm -hmm. and like keep them involved um but yeah and I think like doing the devotions with them and also like you said being in tune to like where their hearts are at and do you ever did you ever get pushback or like do they ever say like, oh, mom, I don't want to do this or, you know, oh, do yeah, they ever? They like... will. Yeah. Just like how we sometimes feel like, oh, this was such a bad day. I do not want to open my Bible. And I tell them, I always say, those are the times mommy's felt like they're the two. Those are the times when you should open your Bible and pray for sure. You know, let God speak to you. 
<clears throat> one thing we do too is we'll we'll go around, we'll give prayer requests, and then we'll go around and someone will pray for someone else. And it is so sweet to hear your kids, you know, pray for you. Or if there's a student that, you know, I'm like, oh, we need you know, to pray for you. They will do that. And it's really sweet. I try to put notes I, that my girls love cards. I love cards and put these little notes in their lunch boxes with Bible verses and things like that. Um, and I have in my Bible somewhere, it might be in this one or my other one, a little note that Kate wrote to me and left me when I went to work. I was going to cry. It is, it, she was really little, like first grade. That is cute. Um, and it, she writes, Mommy, I'm praying for you. I love you. You know, Aww. so just to know that they understand that we support one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so sweet. Well, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I didn't, well, other than I said I didn't, but um, just I've really appreciated our relationship. Um, Kathleen being a young gal, I'm now the, the older woman from Titus too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I really am. <laughs> but I've loved, you know, our conversations and being an older woman does not mean you can't, you know, learn and benefit and value from the younger woman too. I've loved seeing you be become a mom, you know, and see you love on your kids. Um, and so I think there's a lot of value in women, you know, working together. I know before you had Penny, you had asked me if if you were like, you know, before I become a mom, I'd like some discipleship. And we looked at the Risen Motherhood book together. Yeah. And I learned so much from that, too. It's good to think back on those things. Um, every woman's experience is different, but we all, our purpose is to love and honor God. And so it's an amazing thing when you can get together with another mom. And even if you're you're very different you know i know god's gifted you in so many ways that are different than god's gifted me and so it's a, it's a really neat relationship to have with someone to find other people to to talk to about these things yeah and i think um just as an encouragement for the other older women that are listening it i think us younger moms and wives like we do really want to be taught things and even though we might look confident on the outside, I think there's a lot of us that feel like, oh, I just don't know what I'm doing or, you know. And so I think just as an encouragement, it might, I know, I I feel like as women, there's just like this weird tension sometimes. And maybe older women don't want to come across as like. They know everything. Because yeah, we don't. Right, yeah. Right. And, you know, I mean, don't come across that way. but <laughs> Right. Right. But, but just no, I think a lot of us younger moms like we do really want to be taught things even if it's like you know like potty training or like mm -hmm. you know just practical things like that um but there are a couple of verses that i wanted to end with that i just was thinking about um and so one of them is galatians 6 uh 9 and it says and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up and um I think of that verse a lot when I'm just like, you know, having one of those days that you just like, you know, the work that you're doing is good, no matter what you're doing, like, you know, just throughout your day, but you just are tired and you're like, man, just, I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing the benefits right now of everything that I'm doing. Um, and also uh, from Colossians 3, um, 23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Um, and I think that is that can be encouraging for if you're struggling with you know working at home or working outside the home or you know just questioning what you're doing whatever you do like you had said you you know like your family you you serve the lord as a family um and so i think those are good things to think about they're very good very true yes <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Crystal, for thank being on here me. today. It was a good conversation. Um, and thank you all for watching. I've really enjoyed all the feedback um, on the episodes that have come out so far. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, give us a five-star review on podcast platforms if you haven't done that. Um, and I've gotten some questions as well on submitting uh, questions specifically for tea time and not coffee time. There are two separate cards on the church's website. So um, if you do have questions or topics that you'd like us to discuss, you can submit them there and I will see them. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this conversation today. 
Um, And please share it if you did enjoy it or if you learned something from it. And we will see you next time.